Hello, this is Pastor Malin Smith, pastor here at New Hope Baptist Church here in Watertown, New York, and I welcome you today to our video series, The Books of the Bible, where we are going to be looking at the book of Ezekiel, and our aim is to get a fresh vision of God. Now here at New Hope Baptist Church, our vision is living life together by bringing new hope in Jesus to all people, and Ezekiel urges us to get a fresh vision of God. Matter of fact, he starts out this prophecy in the first chapter by noting a vision of God on his throne as he is ruling over the earth. Now, Ezekiel occurs in a time in Israel's history where the Babylonian Empire uh, was pressing on uh, the southern kingdom of Judah and particularly its capital city, Jerusalem. And King Nebuchadnezzar would eventually take the inhabitants of Jerusalem into captivity uh, through a series of three waves or invasions in 605 B.C., 597 B.C., and then with the final destruction of Jerusalem in 586 B.C. So Ezekiel, uh, he ministered during that particular time frame. Now, in terms of this fresh vision of God, Ezekiel delivers this to focus his readers' attention on God because the nation had gotten their focus off of God. And as I think about Ezekiel's vision here in his opening chapter, I have here on the board some other chapters in God's Word uh, that might be helpful to you as we consider this theme of a fresh vision for God. Uh, I'm reminded of Isaiah chapter 6 where the prophet Isaiah sees the king, God, seated on his throne. Then, of course, here in Ezekiel chapter 1 uh, is where we see uh, God seated upon his throne, uh, being depicted almost like a chariot uh, with wheels, with eyes all around, surrounded by angels. Then, in Daniel's prophecy, Daniel chapter 7, we see God referred to as the Ancient of Days. When we turn to the New Testament, the book of Revelation has three sections that feature God's throne room. Revelation chapter 1 gives us a full-length view of Jesus Christ and His uh, ascended post-resurrection glory. Revelation 4 and 5 shows us God on His throne and then the throne of the Lamb. And then the last two chapters of the book of Revelation, which are also the last two chapters of the Bible, depict for us the new heavens and the new earth, wherein God's throne is central. So these are the throne room chapters, and I would encourage listeners to look to those chapters uh, to really help understand this idea of a fresh vision for God. Now, the Old Testament scholar Gleason Archer outlines the book of Ezekiel in the following manner. In chapters 1-3, to three, we see Ezekiel's call and commission. And certainly, when we talk about getting a fresh vision for God, it's God's call to us uh, to behold Him and to know Him. Uh, in terms of prophecies against Ju Judah and the fall of Jerusalem, we see that in chapters 4 to 24 of Ezekiel's prophecy. And much like the prophets that we find in the Old Testament, Ezekiel has uh, words of warning, uh, telling the people that unless they repent and turn to God, uh, they will not be able to fare too well. And then there are prophecies against the heathen nations in chapters 25 to 32. And this is where we begin to see uh, a switch in uh, the prophets of Israel. Uh, more so from focusing on uh, the nation of Israel, more and more to the nations. And so Ezekiel would qualify also as really a prophet to the nations. And that is a theme we tend to see more and more as we get deeper and deeper into the Old Testament prophetic books. Then in chapters 33 to 48, we see prophecies of restoration after the fall of Jerusalem. And so that's how Gleason Archer outlines the book of Ezekiel. Now real quickly, just some chapters to consider in the book of Ezekiel if you want to study Ezekiel's prophecy. Uh, now in our last video, uh, when we were looking at the prophet Jeremiah in his prophecy uh, entitled the book of Jeremiah, as well as in uh, the book of Lamentations, we noted that the prophet Jeremiah his prophecies are not arranged in a chronological order. However, Ezekiel's prophecies are arranged in a chronological fashion. But in chapter 10, this is where we see the glory of God departing 
from the temple. And so uh, we see there in Ezekiel chapter 10 this imagery of God's glory lifting up from the temple, lifting up from the city of Jerusalem. And it's one of the most tragic scenes recorded in sacred Scripture. Then, in Ezekiel chapter 28, we see a prophecy concerning the king of Tyre. And it's amazing that in that particular chapter, Ezekiel 28, we also see reference to Lucifer. And many Bible scholars believe that this could very well be a scene concerning Satan's cosmic rebellion at the beginning of creation. Then, one final chapter I want to mention to you in the book of Ezekiel is Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 to 27. Ezekiel 36, verses 25 to 27. And this is with reference to what we call the new covenant. Now, this covenant was God's uh, promise of restoration to the nation of Israel. And this is what it says. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. That's Ezekiel 36 verses 25 to 27. This is what we call the new covenant. Now, this is addressed specifically to the nation of Israel. And at the writing of Ezekiel's prophecy under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this was directed off into the ultimate far future, whereby uh, the promise was made that God would restore the nation of Israel. However, when we come to the New Testament, we quickly discover that especially uh, as a result of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that we as Christians today are getting to be partakers of this new covenant in a spiritual sense. And so Christ promised that he would send his Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2. Uh, the listener can also cross-reference Hebrews chapter 8. And there we see further references to this new covenant. Uh, the New Testament depicts the Lord Jesus Christ as the mediator of the new covenant. And so Christians today are uh, partakers uh, in a spiritual sense of the New Covenant. Of course, the ultimate fulfillment of the New Covenant in a physical sense will occur when Christ returns and the nation of Israel is restored. But note here some promises pertaining to this New Covenant. Number one, God says He will write His law upon the person's heart. Number two, the Holy Spirit will indwell the one who is under the new covenant. Number three, the individual will be able to know God directly and experientially as a result of this new covenant. And number four, God promises to sprinkle the hearts of those who are partakers of the new covenant, to sprinkle them clean. And all of those promises are given to us in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is a central theme of the New Testament. So even though the book of Ezekiel is an Old Testament book, we nevertheless see glimpses into the realities that we see in the New Testament, as well as those realities that will come to full fruition at Christ's return. So I commend the book of Ezekiel to you. It gives us a fresh vision of God. It once again reminds us of how we need to be centered and focused on God. And when we are, we will have a fresh vision of Him. We will be able to experience Him and know Him personally and powerfully. May God richly bless you and thank you for joining us today.